Welcome everyone to Medicine Made Easy. Today we're gonna go over hypocalcemia. What it is, the pathophysiology behind it, the differentials that may cause hypocalcemia, how the patient presents clinically, the complications if we don't treat it, some cool signs that will make the diagnosis easier, and how to manage it properly. Now, hypocalcemia is when the serum calcium concentration is lesser than the lower limit of the reference range. The normal range being 8.6 to 10.3 mg per deciliter or 2.1 to 2.6 millimoles per liter. Now, calcium plays a crucial role in various physiological processes including muscle contraction, nerve transmission and blood clotting. And there's a fine balance maintained within the blood between the absorption through the GI tract, absorption and resorption between the bone and the serum and and how much of calcium is excreted out through the kidneys and all of this is regulated in the background by the parathyroid hormone. Some of the differentials we need to consider as the causes may be hypoalbuminemia, alkalosis, a deficiency of vitamin D, chronic renal failure, hypoparathyroidism, acute pancreatitis and hypomagnesemia. But then the question arises how will the patient even present to you? Since calcium is needed for muscle contraction and nerve conduction, the patient may have tetany, papilledema and cutie prolongation on ECG and more commonly seen in children, they may present with carpopedal spasms, strider when talking and even convulsions. And if such a patient were to go on without any treatment, it may complicate into ventricular arrhythmias, calcification of the basal ganglia of the brain. The convulsions may even convert into grand mal epilepsy. The patient may present with psychosis. There may be eye symptoms like cataracts and due to the resorption from the bone, the patient may have rickets which is weakening of the bones in kids or the adult variant osteomalacia. When diagnosing such a patient, a thorough physical examination following the clinical assessment is vital. And the least invasive thing you can do is an ECG on which we may observe a prolongation in the QT interval. Now the defining feature of hypocalcemia is based on measuring the total serum calcium levels which will be low. However, it is essential to consider the level of albumin in the blood as well as some calcium can be bound to albumin and not readily available. Other labs to consider are RFTs, parathyroid hormone levels, Level and vitamin D levels. Additionally, we can use some imaging modalities like x-rays and a CT scan to assess the cerebral complications. And signs that will help you with the diagnosis of hypocalcemia are true so sign where inflation of the cuff on the upper arm more than the systolic pressure for more than three minutes would result in a carpal spasm. And Schwastek sign where tapping over the facial nerve branches over the parotid gland area causes twitching of the facial muscles. When managing such a patient, we start off by 10 to 20 20 ml of 10% calcium gluconate given intravenously over 10 to 20 minutes followed by a continuous IV infusion of 10% calcium gluconate at 10 ml per hour and throughout all of this we need to monitor the cardiac ECG as well. Now in cases where there is an associated hypomagnesemia we give 50 millimoles or 1.23 grams of magnesium chloride over 24 hours and since most of it is excreted in the urine some further doses may also be required. Thanks for watching you guys, you can go check out more videos on the channel, do leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave a comment down below. I'll see you next time.